from Acadiana, your local news leader. This is Paz Pa 2. Good Saturday morning to you. I'm Renee Allen. We thank you for joining us. A man from behind bars in Angola for over 30 years to now working side by side with the sheriff. One sunset man is giving back and dedicating his life to helping kids in St. Landry Parish. Arthur Castile was only 28 years old when he was sentenced to Angola. He's now 61. News 10's Britt Lofazo has his story. Well, Arthur Castile has been my friend for probably, uh, I don't know, 17, 18 years. My name is Arthur Castile, and my sentence is a second degree murder, and I have a life sentence. Looking back at his time in Angola, Arthur Castile and St. Landry Parish Sheriff Bobby Guidros recall their first meeting. I said, I need this guy. The Sunset native worked in the warden's house. Over the years, the unlikely friendship between Arthur and the sheriff grew. When the sheriff was looking for someone to spearhead a new community outreach program for kids this summer, it just so happened Arthur received parole. If I can get Arthur out there talking to these kids, uh, maybe, just maybe, if he saves one, I'm thankful, but I know he's going to do more than that. I just want to help the community and give back because I, I took something and I want to give back more than I took. Arthur now works as the community outreach coordinator. It's a volunteer position, but one Arthur fully embraces. Accompanied by a commissioned officer, Arthur will go to local schools sharing his story. And I could tell him, if you go down these roads, this is where it can lead you. And the choices that you make in life can decide what your life's going to be. Until I die, that's what I want to do. What he says he wants most is to prevent young people from going down the same road he took. It's all the, the would haves and the should haves I should have did in my life, and I think about that. It's the things that I should have been. Yeah, that was Britt LaFonso reporting there. If you'd like others to speak at your organization or school, contact the St. Landry Parish Sheriff's Office. New information on a homicide in Iberia Parish. The coroner's office has identified the victim as a Cameron Bedsell of New Iberia. A deputy responded to the 4700 block of Jasper Road in Iberia Parish to find a 36-year-old man with fatal gunshot wounds. Then two people have been indicted for their involvement in the 2022 death of a 17-year-old from Eunice. The St. Landry Parish Grand Jury rendered a superseding indictment against Isaiah Brett Carrier and Donna Granger for second-degree murder. Now, both Carrier and Granger were originally jointly indicted back in October 2022 with the manslaughter of the juvenile. The 17-year-old was given fentanyl that resulted in his death Arraignment for Carrier and Granger is set for early January. So, another story for you out of St. Landry Parish. 16 Port Berry High School and middle school students ranging from 14 to 19 years old have been arrested and charged for fighting at school. Police Chief Dion Boudreaux says there was one fight Tuesday afternoon where an expelled student drove on the property with two other students and ran to the bus area to fight with other students. Police say as a result, a larger fight started and there was another fight Wednesday morning in the classroom. Chief Vujo says that disciplinary actions are inviolate. He believes the school board, the school education system and state lawmakers are too lenient and more consequences need to be in place to make students not want to get in trouble. Port Berry police chief says school fights have become a common nuisance. He says there needs to be more accountability and consequences to deter that type of activity in schools. It's been reported at least seven uh, fights to the police this school year, and that's not including the ones that's not reported. Uh, it's just too common. And over the years, it seems like we spend more time in the schools uh, arresting juveniles for fighting than we do trying to just walk around campus and, and, and show our, our presence. Chief Dion Boudreau says he believes the problem is disciplinary action is not tougher. Right now, th there's no fear. They, they do not fear authority. Uh, these teachers, um, their lives are in danger at school, I feel. Uh, they have to deal with these, these violent children. And they go to college and learn how to teach, not, not how to break up fights. The chief says the juvenile justice system needs to be reformed and having officers within schools could help. I believe it starts with putting officers in schools 
And the state needs to find funding for that. We need police officers in school to deter that type of activity. But also our juvenile justice system, it, it has to be uh, not as lenient as it is. These kids are not scared to go to juvie. Once they've been there, are not scared. It, it's like a vacation for them. So they're not scared to go. As leaders in, in, in our communities, with, with our, our state and local governments, we need to get together and say, all right, enough's enough. We are the adults. Let, let's formulate a plan, let's find the funding, and let's make these, these kids not want to get in trouble anymore. In Port Barry, Roderick Taylor, KLFY News 10. All right, in St. Martin Parish, just days after a student was arrested for a social media threat at Cecilia Junior High School, another threat was made yesterday. Parents were allowed to keep their children home if they felt their children were not safe. Leaders at Cecilia Junior High School say their students and staff are their top priority. So here in the Hub City, a family is homeless after escaping a fire with just clothes on their backs. News 10's Jasmine Dean speaks with the family. Behind me is what's left of Deborah Sam's home after a fire destroyed everything she owned earlier this morning. She says it's by the grace of God her family made it out alive. When I woke up, my house was just full of fire and all I kept seeing was things popping, fire popping out the roof and thing in the wall. Deborah Sam and her family were asleep in the living room when an electrical shortage caused flames to spread throughout her home. She says her son woke up to the smell of smoke and fire. And that was my son got up and woke us all up. But when I'm not really trying to get out of the house, I fell talking to him and said, Mama, get up, get up. And all I can remember, he grabbed me and pulled me outside. She says flames were everywhere and they lost everything, including the house. Alton Trahan with the Lafayette Fire Department says they got the call just before 2.30 early Friday morning. When we got on scene, the uh, in front of the house was on fire. The firefighters were able to um, start extinguishing the home. It took us about 20 minutes to get under control because uh, you had two vehicles that was burning as well and it was concerned about the home next door. Uh, but fortunately, the family made it out safely, which was our number one concern arriving on the scene. Making it out with just the clothes on her back, she says she does have plans to rebuild if possible. I just want to get back to my house. I want to rebuild my house, live there, because I struggle for this place. Sam says it's a battle for her, but she's praying she gets the help she needs. She says she is determined to not give up. Because I'm not giving up on my house. This is mine. It's got to come back up the way God gave it to me. Yeah. She says although this is a tragedy, she's beyond grateful to still be alive. In Lafayette, Jasmine Dean, KLFY News 10. Wow, just be for the holidays too. Information on how you can help can be found on our website. That's kilifly.com. All right, so we're going to have, we're going to talk about the holiday travel. The Thanksgiving holiday getaway is already underway and millions and millions of people are starting to travel already. Here's Chris Van Cleve. What used to be a four-day Thanksgiving holiday is now nearly a two-week travel extravaganza. Thursday, more than 2.5 million passed through airport checkpoints, and the nation's airlines expect that number to climb closer to 2.7 million starting today. I don't like flying either, but <laughs> sometimes you have to fly. <laughs> Trying to beat the crowds, definitely. The Trevesos found a good deal on flights leaving Fort Lauderdale today to see family in Puerto Rico. We don't want to travel next week when, when the airports are, are pretty crazy. Airlines expect nearly 30 million passengers to travel through the Monday after Thanksgiving, a new record, flying about 9% more people daily compared to last year. Next Sunday is expected to be the busiest day at airports ever, with the potential of 3.2 million passing through. Already this month, the TSA has screened more passengers than before the pandemic. We're expecting to see the most passengers departing from Atlanta, Denver, Dallas, and Los Angeles. Lines will be longest early morning and early afternoon for people heading out. More people are expected to drive, over 49 million according to AAA, making this the third busiest Thanksgiving ever. Drivers will see significantly lower prices at the pump, 39 cents cheaper than last year. Every penny drop in the national average saves Americans roughly $37 million every single day. Now, the Friday before Thanksgiving, it's almost a week before the holiday, and the airlines expect it to be their fourth busiest of the holiday stretch. 
here at the Miami airport. They're preparing for a Thanksgiving record of nearly 2 million flyers. Chris Van Cleve, CBS News, Miami. All right, we got a millions and millions of travelers out there. I'm getting prepped for the holiday weekend. I guess that would be next week because a lot of yeah. people are kind of taking off the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday so they can enjoy and do the travel thing there. What's the weather going to be like for us, at least locally? Well, it looks like we could see some rainfall coming in Monday night and Tuesday. Maybe another round of rain coming in Thanksgiving Day, but models still sort of disagreeing on that. So 63 in Lafayette, 62 in New Iberia. We could see some fog out there for this morning. Not really showing up at the airports yet, but we'll be monitoring that through the morning. Satellite radar shows clouds moving in for today. We actually have a weak front that's situated right overhead. We'll see a bit of a wind shift with that for today and uh, today maybe about five to six degrees cooler than what we saw yesterday, but this front really won't do much to change our weather. It will move down to the south though, but come right back northward as a warm front on Monday ahead of a stronger storm system that will be moving into the area, giving us a pretty decent storm chance Monday night and Tuesday. Temperatures rising through the 60s getting into the lower 70s later on today. Here's future track. It has a mostly sunny sky, but clouds as well, so I'll call it a mix of clouds and sun for today. And then for tomorrow, a similar picture, a mostly sunny to partly cloudy. So the weather looks nice through the weekend, but then by Monday night and Tuesday, that's when those storms begin to roll in. Temperatures upper 50s, lower 60s this morning, mid 70s for this afternoon. Chilly for tonight in the upper 40s to near 50 degrees, but then warming up again for tomorrow afternoon with that sun coming back out. Here's the upper level situation. Northwesterly flow for now bringing in drier air, but then this trough approaches for Sunday night, Monday and Tuesday. So winds will be strong in the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere. A little bit of wind shear there. Surface low could develop to our north, so we will have the atmosphere that will be conducive for a few stronger storms as Monday and then again Tuesday morning, especially to our north on Monday and then more so on Tuesday for us as that main front works through the area. We'll have to uh, iron out the details on this through the next few days, but it looks like we could see at the very least a low end severe weather threat with this system. Atmospheric moisture is low for today and tomorrow, but then moisture levels increase Monday night and Tuesday as that front works through and then drier air moves in for Wednesday and through Thanksgiving Thursday. Cooler air as well. We are sure about that. Looks like we'll see cooler temperatures for Thanksgiving Day. Here's the latest GFS model. It has rainfall coming in Monday night and Tuesday, so models are pretty good with the timing on that, and both models, the GFS and the Euro model, agree with this, so Monday night and Tuesday storms look like a pretty good bet at this time, and then Wednesday and Thursday, GFS model dries us out, but now the Euro model is the one that's still trying to develop another round of rain coming in for Thanksgiving Thursday. So the Thanksgiving forecast is still up in the air. I'll introduce about a 20% chance for showers in the forecast on Thanksgiving Thursday, but that could go up or down depending on what models eventually agree on. So stay tuned on that Thanksgiving forecast, but we still have about five days to iron that out. 75, your high today, mostly cloudy and warm. North winds at about 6 to 14. Seven day forecast has lower 70s tomorrow. 30% chance for storms late Monday night and through early Tuesday. I think it'll come in during the wee hours of the morning. Tuesday morning temperature in the upper 60s with temperatures dropping throughout the day on Tuesday and then much cooler Wednesday and Thursday. As of now, I'm going with the drier solution for Thanksgiving Thursday, but again, stay tuned. That could change. Yeah, 